Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockdown. Yay! Yay. Another, another one. one. Jeez. It right. will be the last. We're going into lockdown again. We're 24 hours off. We just wanted to put this video together for you before we're not allowed to even do it. Um, we are going to look at getting you through lockdown, but more than that, trying to get you to adapt your business for the longer term. Um, we are here right now in lockdown. We want you to survive lockdown. Lockdown is going to be four weeks, possibly more. When we come out of lockdown, you're still going to have to hit possibly one, two and three tier restrictions. We want to get you looking at your business, um, adapting and surviving. So we're here, we'll soon be there. And if Johnny the Bleak has anything to do with it, we'll be in this forever. Let me take this off him. Um, I'm not too bleak, I'm more a realist. I think that if you look at this, this is our kind of uh, sort of ground zero here. Actually, we've got 10 months already of of yeah. Covid coronavirus. We've got we've had a lockdown, a significant one, we're having another lockdown, supposedly a limit a period of time. And then we're gonna have a uh, Christmas trading period which is gonna be massively shorter than normal. It's a bit of a token it, it gesture. Is, it is. It's it's we're we're gonna be allowed Christmas so that we don't revolt. It's not gonna be much more than that to be honest. Yeah. And and in all likelihood over the next twelve months we're gonna be hitting um, various restrictions almost continually. We're going to hit further lockdowns, in my opinion. I, I, I can't see it changing. Um, we might have the circuit breaker thing, which sort of short, sharp ones happening. Fire starter. The, yeah, the, the truth is that this is this this uh, the anxiety around it and also the, the threat perceived unreal is not going away over this period of time. Okay, sit back down. That's bleak. Too bleak. Right. Let's sit somewhere in the middle. We need to deal with here. Um, are you going to survive lockdown? What can you do in lockdown? We do need to consider the long term, you're right. The, the world has changed, everything's changed. So what we're going to try and do is take you through this stage later on, which is your resources, to see what you've got and whether you're able to, to move on and whether you're able to adapt. And the easiest way we found to uh, explore this is to take three examples of different businesses um, and use those examples because they are genuine examples to show how they have already adapted, running through the first 10 months, like Johnny mentioned, and see if you can apply any of that to your business. No, you sit down. I will. It's so complicated. This oh, thing. It's in a... Examples. So, three fantastic examples. Uh, they are all on the A6, which is a big main road not far from here, and they're all 100 metres from each other. And they're, they've all successfully either achieved or in the process of adapting from a holding pattern to a, what, what is a medium term strategy really as yeah, a business? a reinvention. Um, first of all, we've got a cafe. A cafe, classic daytime operator suffering already from restrictions because basically your, yeah, your space is down, restricted. Anxiety is up, um, yeah. capacity is down. Yeah. Okay, so what are they doing? What they're doing different is they're offering uh, takeaway. Okay, so I can go and get a cake and, and walk out with it. Well, it's, it, it's more than that. They're actually doing delivery, and they're also doing delivery of sort of what I would describe as sort of uh, posh upmarket takeaway. It's almost having your Sunday lunch delivered. Okay, so yeah. their market heat, before... It's called Heat at Home. Heat Not at Home. To say. Okay, nice. So their market before was walking. Walking. Walking yeah. is, is not dead. A few cupboards outside, but... It's certainly restricted. Yeah. So they've opened up their door and said, actually, if we can deliver to homes, we have a captive audience. Time, yeah. Okay, number two, farm shop. A um, little bit of a giveaway here. We've got takeaway on this side. We've got outside on this. Uh, this farm shop's done done a bit of both. Um, okay. It is both uh, now offering takeaway. It was a butcher's. Um, then they started doing this sort of green grocery thing and then rebranded themselves as a farm shop. Not sure it actually right. is, but it called itself that. Butchers, yeah. Yeah, the butchers with the green grocers <laughs> stuck in. Okay. And what they've done is they started cooking off some of their meat and doing uh, hot sandwiches at, at, at lunch. Right, so they so, do lunch. So yes, yeah, so okay. effectively for the businesses in the area, they're doing a... a okay, so they're not as far as delivery, but no. they are doing a takeout service. Correct. Or pickup service. What they're also doing, uh, which we're going to come to later on space, yeah. is despite not having any outside space, it back, it's straight front straight onto the main road. Yeah. Pavement's about one and a half metres wide or whatever. Um, they have moved the shop to basically the sort of uh, the counter being almost in, in, the, in the entrance. They've actually moved onto the street. Okay, so almost the market still so that the yeah, restrictions they, don't apply quite almost, as... Almost moved outside. Um, there are some uh, interesting changes that we're going to come on to which will allow you to do that 
on on not quite on the public highway, but certainly on the on the pavement. Put it in the road. Yeah. Okay. Number three. Pub restaurant. Pub restaurant. Um, really interesting. Um, basically, I've sweated the asset massively in terms of their outside space, both at the back and the front. They put big gazebos in. Bit of magic with some fairy lights. Half enclosed, uh, so they can hold some heat in from some space heaters, the infrared ones. So this is not because everyone's taking up smoking. This is because they can cover off the same. Yes, yeah, uh, effectively. Uh, although the, the the food side is down, the wet side of the business, wet wet referring to the drink side of the business, is is massively up. Yeah. And of all the pubs on 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 the whole A6, we've got six or seven. Um, they have been doing by far the best. Right. So effectively absorb the customers of, of the others by making Rams. a change. I, I would question some of the social distancing from the customers, but you're, you're ultimately you're not responsible yes. necessarily for that. Yes. I'll sit down. Okay, lovely. Right, so there's our examples. They've achieved something. They've all achieved a level of sustainability, and that's kind of key. Surviving COVID yeah. is, for some, just scraping by. For others, it's an opportunity. Um, what we want to do is try and get you somewhere in there. We, we want you to get through this. So if we take these examples, the, the cafe we want to play off against lockdown. How does it do in lockdown? If it wasn't for this delivery service they put in place, they would be incredibly restricted. Yeah. Um, if we take the farm shop, it's a shop, so it's got the benefit of it it's sits... It's a central shop, so yeah, it stays open for that. sits outside that, but again, it's offering uh, a lunch service you can pick up while you're there. You yeah, technically, mm. um, the, there's a, it's a moot point, isn't it? Because um, they are not delivering. However, if you're going there for your essential food, yeah. there is nothing to stop you buying your sandwiches whilst you're there. Yeah, I would rather go there than the supermarket for, yeah. uh, for a hot lunch. Uh, Put it that way. Well, I can stand outside and buy everything. You can. So they need to okay, and then finally, our, our pub. How does that do in, in lockdown? Um, it doesn't really. Not does it? great, but I think they're a little better resourced, and I think they're part of a small group, and I think they they have set themselves up nicely. That I don't think they're interested. Yeah. Lock, lockdown is a setback, uh, uh, but a minor one at best. Yeah. Okay. So they can still function and make some money. Yeah. They can do incredibly well at this. Pre Christmas, they're going to do fantastic. They're they're, they're really well yeah. enabled. Yeah. They're set for it, aren't they? And the pub restaurant, although this four weeks, possibly six weeks, is not going to be good for them. They've got a survival plan. We were talking about this longer term. They are now set up to actually, when they're allowed, function throughout the winter with a good capacity of customer and good. Okay, so there's our three examples. These examples are achieving what we want for you, which is this longer term success, these chances within lockdown. Viability, sustainability, yeah. Yeah, just, just carrying on, surviving this, or in some cases, thriving. So. They found the resources, you may have some of these resources. And if you don't think you've got any of these resources, hopefully, by the time we've explored these, you'll find out actually you have got some of them. Or there's things we can give you that you can do to, to get you closer to this. So let's start with cash. Cash is king. Yeah, so the cafe, probably no significant formal extra cost in what they've done. The farm shop has adapted the front of the shop with uh, a canopy which we're going to come on to, so some cost there, uh, and uh, they've started cooking off stuff, so clearly they've had to invest yeah, in an oven, cost, yeah. uh, and one or two other facilities. Uh, the pub has gone big time and, and has probably spent probably around five, five, six, seven thousand pound mark really. Okay. Let's look at um, let's look at cash both in terms of uh, keeping the till ringing. Uh, tills don't ring anymore, do they? But no, keep the contactless contacting. Uh, contacting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, cutting costs. Um, one of the big things that I'd, I'd suggest, which you maybe haven't done already, because I, I guess in the initial lockdown and panic of that, you would have looked at contracting your costs and been a bit a lot tighter. A couple of things is, one, you've got certain dishes that, that are highly profitable, like pizza is the classically the most... Um, well, the big margin. The, the, the biggest earner, yes, yeah. the biggest margin of, yeah. of all sort of hot food. Um, but the big one that I would suggest is going to your... Um, suppliers going to your landlord all your cost centers and asking to asking them to share the hurt with you it, it's negotiate um, give you longer terms on stuff switch products out that are perhaps a little bit more affordable rent holidays temporary reductions yeah. what's the worst that they could do uh, providing you don't do it in, a, in an aggressive way they're going to say no 
and um, it's it's something you've that tried, you? it's you've something tried. that we've done as a business, and and you know a, a lot of our major sort of partners have come with us in, in through a difficult period. So that would be a big one. Go and negotiate. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, right, we're going on to staff. Staff's an interesting one because staff are probably your biggest cost. One saving is every time we hit lockdown, the, the government rolls in the furlough scheme. It's not guaranteed. It's not really fixing your business. It's just a holding pattern, a holding pattern you don't want to be in. So let's think about staff rather than as a cost, as an asset. If you've got them and they're not able to do their job or they can't do enough of their job to get you the money you need, you need to adapt. You need to do what these are doing. So if we take the cafe in this one, the cafe have staff but they have adapted to a delivery service. Several of the staff drive cars. So already you have a delivery service. service. Yeah. Obviously there's implications, you need to look at insurance, you need to look at the, their contracts and so on and so forth and the, the health and safety implications of it. But they didn't get rid of their staff, they changed what their staff did. Those staff get to stay in their jobs because their job is now to drive around and to deliver food. Yeah, and bring so now we're in lockdown, bring. just lock the door, carry on cooking, people are taking yeah. it out the back. Yeah, so, so they're not in a holding position. Those people's jobs, the staff have, have come to the aid of the company because they have skill sets. You might have fantastic skill sets. You might have a chef that's so good, you can stick him on video, shove him on YouTube and make money off of adverts. I think they might do that on the slide without you. But... Think about group. your staff, get them together, they are in the same boat as you, they are in trouble. Yeah, the creatively, what, what can they come up with? Often some of the, the, the best ideas have come out of the staff, but yeah. you know, why don't they normally volunteer? Because you don't normally ask them. Yeah, they've got skill sets and they've got abilities, like driving. If they've got a scooter licence, you're laughing. You've got a, a very effective <laughs> delivery yeah. system. Okay, moving on from that, we've got equipment. Johnny just said there's a big margin in, in pizzas. Pizza ovens can live outside. If this pub wants to expand again, stick a pizza oven outside. Yeah. They're laughing. Um, a lot the, number of places, of pizza, the number of pizza ovens we find at, at, at pubs under tarpaulins yeah. that have just been, you know... Um, yeah, slightly worrying yeah. that maybe it doesn't if you, if you take a pub over recently, have a look. There's probably one You've probably got one. Right yeah. Now, yeah. Um, you look at the microbreweries. The whole point of a microbrewery was it was micro. You can fit about four people in and they're like this. They're in trouble with social like distancing, people, yeah. but there is a market for it. They have got one cover now. They are, yeah, <laughs> just through the window. And that. So you've got, they've got the equipment to supply something that cannot be supplied by the things that stay open in yeah. lockdown. The things that stay open in the tiers. The supermarket cannot give you fresh brewed beer. As a bare minimum, they should be doing a, a, a lockdown brew, shouldn't they? Of <laughs> COVID. No, you can't. It's corona. It's already done. It's already done. Yeah, you can't, you can't have it. Um, other equipment is actually a lot of places supply externally. So a lot of pubs have the ability to stick stuff on the trailer, to go off and do the festivals that used to exist. A lot of that stuff is available now to buy. So if we're talking about cash, your cash will go a hell of a lot further on buying equipment right now, especially mobile equipment, than ever before. Let, um, me, let me have this. What, you want space? I'm having space, because space, this is my big this thing out, out, out of all of this. Paul's your takeaway guy, and, and, and a bit of creativity within that. Thanks. Mine is about the outside space, right? The, the pub has the space to do it. But so do all the other pubs. There's, there's nearly all of them uh, don't directly front onto the road. Uh, and when they do, they've got car parks. Um, if you're not sweating your outside space, inexcusable. It's, it's risky. Give, it's, it's highly risky given yes. the level of anxiety that is not going to go away over, over contracting it in an enclosed space. You have to take advantage of that. Now, that it doesn't need to cost five, six, seven, ten thousand pounds. It could be 500 quid, it could be 800,000. It could be a couple of hundred quid. So the farm shop, what I love about this one is that this is right onto the A6. The pavement's about one and a half metres wide maximum. Yes. And what they've done is that they've just occupied their entrance and the space in front of their shop with a really narrow shelter. And, and the prams are not going onto the main road. Okay, but so there's almost a market still. Yeah. So that people yeah. aren't coming in. Yeah, in. so that... Yeah. That they're paying a lot of uh, rent and rates on a on what you described as a as a market. As a market still, yeah. But if that's where, if that's where things are, then do it. Obviously, 
they got the benefit, as we've discussed, of, of staying open in this. Yeah. But if you couldn't stay open in this because you were the cafe, but you could still yeah. operate that space, you've got all of this, that whole time scale, as long as we don't go back into lockdown, where you can operate yeah. outside with that confidence that we keep bringing Just in. before we move on very quickly about the farm shop one, um, they have relaxed the uh, the pavement licensing laws about uh, temporary structures yes. and signs and and, and, uh, and occupy, shelving and effectively occupying that space. Occupying the space, yeah. yeah. So just because you're fronting onto a pavement doesn't mean that you can't operate outside. Yeah, it's a really important point. So lucky, lucky, had it already. Yeah, and actually, the councils have listened and, and done. Yeah, so. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, space. If you've got it, use it. If you haven't got it, the use farm it. shop has, yeah, you, yeah can, anyway. you can use it. Uh, the cafe, possibly, it's already in that space. A lot of them are. You have your two seats out front. They're, they've, so already got, they've already. Maybe they've got nowhere to yeah. go, but that's when you need to start thinking outside the box. Is next door empty, unoccupied? There's a lot of unoccupied. So, can that cafe actually, for a peppercorn rent or for nothing, occupy that space from that landlord you just double the amount of seating you can have because there's an empty can i jump back seat. in really quickly with a fantastic one bakewell is not far from here and there is a cafe that has taken this the car park they've got three car parking spaces at the back right they they have and taken the staff car parking spaces and made what they called the secret garden so right that, so car parking that sounds more exciting than staff parking and, and, and <laughs> people are funneling through the the shop right into into the seat so you've garden. got this confidence you've got parking spaces now yeah. making money yeah. rather than occupying create some magic create some magic yeah yeah nice okay so that comes into kind of community the community have clearly got excited about a secret car park garden yes. in space <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so the community for me is a big one is if you are going here you have to go there and let people know. If people don't know, then you won't have a customer base. We're all about to be locked in our houses again. We won't know anything. So the community and the social side of the community has obviously been destroyed by social distancing and the limitations we're in. But online, the communities are, and social media, and social communities there are huge. And I'm not talking about sticking on your Facebook page because you might not have much of a following on your Facebook page, but there are groups it's for businesses in for COVID. People, isn't it? Yeah, there's yeah. networks. People there's, connect to people. I'm from Long Eaton. There is Long Eaton Community Group. Out of that grew Long Eaton Community COVID Support Group. Out of that grew a COVID Support Group for small businesses. There are groups with an awful lot of people ready, willing to share, to help, to communicate. If you're in a cafe that's just set up home delivery, nobody knows. Ask everybody you know to pass on the message of, of what you're doing. We're still open with this, with that, yeah. we're doing this offer or whatever. We've sadly seen people set up the entire takeaway system, the entire delivery system, and they've either paid through their teeth to go on to one of the uh, delivery services, which are, 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 are vultures at the moment because it's a, a bit of an open market for them. Um, they've then committed to the community and said look we'll put signage up but does signage help while well, people are locked in their houses you have to signpost online you have to ask people and i'm not saying beg but people are ready to support you if you're in trouble tell them we're doing this because we want to survive help us out people will help out no end yeah that's that not going to come across as, as needy or, or a bit pathetic no. at all and it's not a pride thing it's we're in you know we're in this together and, and yeah we want to see each other. Well, the, go the government described it as a war, and it? it's, it's the only war where people haven't been able to come together. If there's yeah, a war where yeah. you're fighting in other countries, the people come together over there, the people come together here. We haven't got that, but we've got online. So it's sort of the new way of people helping each other, is sharing, is telling people about it. Yeah. So these all work because they've, they've adapted, and they've adapted quickly, but now the world, or the world that's their customer base, knows because it's local to get on as many local community groups online as you can, get the word around, people will help you. Um, last one's for you, Johnny, because you brought this one up about people changing the, from their existing customers to a whole new set of customers. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the, 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 the adaptability that we're looking at. I, I think that a holding period is usually about just trying to stay in the game with the same market, largely speaking, the same offering, cut a bit of cost, have a bit of a panic, furlough some staff, um, 
that's probably where some businesses are still at. What we're looking for is a genuine adaptation of the model, and that might well be bringing new customers uh, to the table, or yeah. not to the table, as well. It the farm that. shop's the classic example, isn't it? Yeah, they've started doing hot lunches. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it could well be a different demographic, social different demographic. Um, if if your sort of cafe farm shop model classically serves, um, you know, middle aged to more elderly people. They're going to be locked down and also perpetually anxious through this period. Understandably yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it might be that you have to chase a different market, affluent younger people who are not really being affected significantly by the virus and, and are also uh, through this vir virus period are a lot more sort of socially active. Yeah. So it might well be adapting to different ages um, and. I think it's also sweat in the assets. So how can you best use that space, best use your the, the time that you can stay open and operate? Um, so my thing really about through all of this has been about outside space and taking uh, account of the fact that the anxiety around being in, in enclosed space is not going to go away for at least probably 12 months. Yeah, we've settled into it now, and it is a fear and it's staying for good. Uh, one example for the new customer, old customer, I think is, is the cafe. If you've moved from a, an area where you weren't operating in and you now are, so deliveries, this cafe didn't exist in a delivery thing. It didn't have anything to do with people in their homes. It now does. So they've done a massive shift. They have their existing customer base, but the old customer may be their new customer. That's going to be their, 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 their issue is going to be how they connect with the, with the takeaway market. Yeah, it's communication again. So you're back to your community. If you've created that takeaway, that delivery service, your old customers that won't come out now or are less willing to come out or physically can't come out because there's no room in the cafe are your new home delivery customers. And also, if you engage with your community well, they will back you and they will deliver you new customers as well. This business, I've got a question mark on, on short-term vi uh, viability and a question mark on sustainability, given that the covers are down, the anxiety, yeah. and they're inside. This business is going to do well. They've ad adapted really well. This business has uh, adapted fantastically well by using the space and is going to claw back the restaurant side of stuff by moving to a sort of tapas kind of standing model for, for eating outside and they're going to do fantastically well through this period. Question is, what are you going to do? Yeah, so that's it. We're here, we could have more of those. Which one of these could you be? What resources have you got? And can you survive in these different tiers? I hope that that's helped you think about it. Get some of this stuff down on paper, break down the resources within your business, see if you can get closer to this flexible model. And then once you've got an idea of what it is you want to do, play it off against, but what if we're in lockdown? But what if we're in yeah. tier one, two, and three? Or what if we're just uh, in a recession, which is inevitably coming for, for several years? Is it going to be enough? And if you've done this, and if you implement this, um, good luck to you, because I really hope you survive. Um, we're planning on surviving. Yeah. And by the way, uh, obviously keep all your staff well trained. <laughs> We'd be interested in your stories off the back of it, our, our comments, so do contact us with uh, any ideas, any yes. success stories. We're, we're, we're happy to try and publicise some people that are, that are doing well out of this and have managed to make that adaptation. So, yeah. Yeah, and we're doing this all the time. All the time that this sector exists, we are going to be coming together for these kind of chats. So, again, in the comments below, Anything you'd like us to discuss, to kind of work around, to, to bring to the screen, we are happy to consider. So good luck. Take this on board. I hope it helps you out. And from me and Johnny, uh, we'll see you on the other side. See you soon.